the City of LA. And I'm pleased that you guys all took time out of your busy days to come here and learn more about the project. So welcome, thank you for coming. Um, a little housekeeping items. We have bathrooms out that door, uh, the back door to your right, if you haven't seen so already. And we also have exits on each side of the building in case of emergency. And um, before we get started, I would like to thank um, Council Member Jose Guizar's um, office for being here today. And tonight we have Julio Esterios. And um, I'm going to hand over the mic for him to welcome you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Julio Esperias, your deputy for the office of Council Member Jose Guizar. Welcome. Uh, so we're here today to talk about the specific project, a project that's been ongoing for quite some time. Uh, so our office is here to listen and to take notes of any concerns that you might have and to work with you and DOE to make sure that uh, this is a, a project that's going to you know, go uh, through smoothly. Uh, with that said, I'll go ahead and pass it on and uh, let's get this uh, presentation started. Thank you, everyone. Okay, a couple more announcements. We do have uh, Project Manager Dung Tran here today that will be uh, leading our presentation. And his right-hand guy um, for the Bureau of Engineering, we have Jerry um, Hernandez um, here today. Raise your hand. These, this is our technical team. We also have Dominic. Where's Dominic? Raise your hand. And George in the back there. Our lovely other guys from the Bureau of Engineering. And we also have Bear Sargas right here from DOT. Um, and so if, these are the guys who know all about this project. They eat, sleep, and breathe it. So they're happy to answer all of your questions. And uh, without further ado, um, actually another housekeeping item after the presentation, we will have a question and answer uh, session and we will try to limit it because we want to be respectful, respectful of your time to one question per person until we make it around the room. And then after all the questions have been answered, we will open it back up to the open house portion of it over here at the boards. This is the, they are, um, the boards depict the project and the detours that will be happening. And without further ado, I'll hand it back to Doug. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Doug Tran. I'm with the Bureau of Engineering. I'm the project manager. I will be responsible for this project. Um, I will be at the site with Jerry Hernandez, who will be here throughout the construction of the project. Um, what you're looking at is the project site. You're looking at uh, Huntington North and Soto. Actually, this is Mission. This is Soto, uh, running north and south of the area. The objective of the project is to remove the existing uh, Soto Street Bridge, which is currently functionally obsolete, mainly due to the vertical clearance and the railing, which are substandard. Um, they don't meet the current requirements. That's why um, the Bureau of Engineering was able to apply for federal grant uh, to remove this project. Um, because of the removal of the project, it will create two signalized intersections. Um, one will be at Soto and Mission, and I believe uh, Supreme Court, and the other one will be Huntington Drive, North and South, Radio Drive. Because of the um, removal of the bridge, it will also create a new frontage road with two cul-de-sacs. Uh, it will also provide some green space for landscaping and tree planting in the area. The bridge is uh, substandard, mainly because of vertical clearance. If you look at the bridge, uh, you're going to see in the next picture or so, the vertical clearance does not meet the current standard. That's one of the uh, efficiency of the bridge. It will increase the uh, uh, traffic and pedestrian safety. It will improve the traffic flow, the north-south um, movement of traffic will be improved. It will remove the barrier between the two communities. Uh, certainly it will improve the neighborhood because of the green space, the landscaping that uh, 
the left over because of the bridge, one, uh, bridge removal. The, if you look at this, this is from Huntington South, if you're trying to go to uh, Mission. The vertical clearance here is substandard. It, it does not meet the current standard. Uh, typically, the current standard is about 14 feet, uh, 6 inches. The current uh, vertical clearance here does not meet the current standard. If you look at the railing, the railing is substandard as well. It doesn't meet the current code. Um, that's one of the reasons that we were able to uh, uh, qualify for federal um, grant to do the uh, removal of the bridge. The project schedule. Uh, we advertised the project back in February of this year. It was awarded in, awarded in July. We, uh, the Board of Public Works issued a notice to proceed on August 14, which is today. The contractor, we just had a pre-construction meeting with a contractor. Uh, we had a meeting with the uh, Department of Water and Power uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, you probably see some utility re relocation uh, either uh, this weekend or the next couple of days. Uh, we are working closely with um, water and power, the power side and the water side to get all the permit in place. So the uh, Department of Water and Power will start to do some of the utility relocations now. Um, but the contractor will be mobilized in September. We, we are working with the contractor to um, locate a field office. So we're going to be out in the field with the contractor, with the inspector, with the engineer. We'll be on the site um, every day. Uh, the, you probably will see the construction uh, begin in October. That's when we're gonna start. Uh, you're gonna start see uh, some of the construction activity in the area. The project duration is approximately about three years. We'll probably complete the project by fall 2016. Uh, this project. The challenge of this project is mainly the traffic. Um, as we, we've been working closely with the Department of Transportation in the last five years uh, to, the, uh, to determine the traffic staging for this project, we were able to uh, come up with three-stage traffic control. Uh, it's been reviewed and, um, by DOT and it has DOT approval. Um, in each stage, there will be at least one lane of traffic in each direction throughout the construction. Um, we, we are working, we do expect there will be some inconvenience, there will be some traffic impact in the area, but we will maintain at least one lane of traffic throughout the three year period. The gesture walkway will be maintained at all times. We will require the contractor, that's part of the plans and specs in the contract, the contractor required to provide at least four foot of sidewalk or walkway uh, for pedestrians throughout the construction as well. All city services will be maintained throughout the construction. We will work closely with, again, with Bureau Street Services, with uh, various departments within the city, so all the services will be maintained. Um, signage will be working closely with the Department of Transportation every time before we implement any traffic control we will have um, interchangeable message sign um, at least two weeks in advance. There will be signage, there will be uh, notice in advance. The commu community will be, uh, be notified in advance before we implement each traffic control plan. What to expect during uh, construction? Typically our working hours from Monday to Friday, 7 to 4 p.m. 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, there will be intermittent night work and weekend work. Um, there's a possibility that we have to close the, uh, the area under the bridge, probably for the weekend. Certainly we'll work closely with the council office, with the community, to notify you in advance before we do any full closure. There will be temporary relocation of selected bus routes or bus stops 
Um, again, we are working on the contract that is required to work with Metro, or to coordinate with Metro to um, relocate the bus stop on a temporary basis. Again, there will be uh, notice, will be handed out, um, will be uh, on the route so that you will be notified in advance before we relocate any bus stops. Um, best management practices, um, we know um, during removal of the bridge, there will be dust. So we're working closely with the contractor. The contractor is required to install fans with fabric uh, to keep the dust within the construction area. We do have inspector will be monitoring the site, monitor the area on daily basis. So we will have um, people monitor the dust uh, in the area as well as noise. Uh, we do have Department of Transportation. We do have traffic engineers will be at the site with us, so we will monitor the traffic, um, monitor any um, traffic issues or traffic related, um, so we will um, need to make any adjustment as necessary. Um, community outreach, we do intend to come out to uh, have uh, public outreach or community meetings like this. Uh, to notify you every time we change the traffic control plans uh, or before we implement um, another traffic control plan so you know ahead of time um, what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how you're going to get from point A to point B. So again, we will have more um, traffic um, community meeting uh, before we implement or before we change the uh, traffic control staging. For more information, we do have a Bureau of Engineering website that you can go to the website. And um, there's a, a BOE Facebook. We are trying to create a Facebook page uh, in the Bureau of Engineering Facebook. Um, there is uh, our Public Affairs Office email and phone number that you can contact or have any more questions after the meeting. Um, certainly, you can uh, contact our Public Affairs um, Consultant, they also have the information available. And do we have the, uh, the card, the question cards, in case people want to ask? So we do have question cards if you want to grab a card and then let us know during the meeting or after the meeting. Just hand it to our uh, public affair office. We will answer your questions. That's all I have for my presentation. So that's the reason why it takes three years. And safety, right? During that 
of course, I mean, safety is our number one priority throughout the construction, so that's part of our, that's our number one priority. I think the second part of you, um, that you asked is related why the bridges, uh, because of railing, because of vertical clearance, why we remove the bridge. Um, under the federal guidelines, uh, we, um, the bridge is functionally obsolete mainly because of the railing, some standard, uh, mainly vertical clearance. The federal government come up with, or through Caltrans, they come up with, they call it uh, eligible bridge list. That, that is the bridge is under 80% um, rating is required to be improved or to, to remove it, or to rebuild it, or to widen it. For this bridge, the rating is really low, below um, 80. That's why it meets the federal re requirements that, that's why the federal gave us the grant to remove the bridge and to realign the, um, the street. Uh, you mentioned notice in advance and ahead, ahead of time all these notices. The NPP was issued today, but two weeks ago you didn't tell us that it was going to be issued today. NPP So the first part of the questions, uh, the NTP or the notice to proceed is issued by the Board of Public Works. We've been notified that the NTP, and in the, my previous meeting on August 1st, I did say that the NTP will issue by August, mid-August. I don't know the exact date. We received about a couple days ago from the Board of Public Works that the NTP will be issued on August 14th. Um, and knowing that, we did have a reconstruction meeting with the contractor today, and their subs. Um, those are the internal uh, documents, meetings. Um, it does, I mean, you can attend if you like, uh, part, be part of the meetings, but it's very, it get into very technical, very detailed, and it get involved into contracts, plans, and specs, and so on. I don't know if you want to attend that kind of meeting. Today meetings it's go from, uh, 9.30 until uh, we have uh, 9.30, 11, uh, one, uh, 2 o'clock meeting until 4. So it's, it's, we, we will continue to have these kind of meetings on a regular basis, almost every week. They're not right, typically they're not open to the public, but you know it doesn't stop you from coming to the public works building and look and find out where the meetings are. But again, we will have numerous meetings with a contractor throughout in the next three years. I don't know if you want to attend all those meetings. We would have regular meetings out on the field with the contractor. Uh, we will be out on the field. Jerry, I know he's going to be here a couple days a week. I'll be out on the field a couple days a week with the contractor. So, I mean, you're more than welcome to stop by the field office and look at our, our plans and schedule and so on. Yeah. I'll let Bear Sarkis from the Department of Transportation to answer that. Uh, well, mainly when we talk about maintaining roadway open is the, the major, uh, is, the, is the roadway itself, which is Soto, Huntington, and Mission. On those, there will be at least one lane open in each direction. We don't have any activities on side streets. We're not going to close any side streets, residential streets. 
So when we say we will maintain one lane open in each direction, we mean one lane open on Soto, one lane open on, would be more than one lane on Huntington itself, but would be more than one lane on Mission. So it's Mission, Huntington, and Soto. No, no, there will be no closure, except when there will be part of the bridge that is, when they remove part of the bridge underneath it is a roadway that's a connector that goes from northbound Mission to Huntington, that connector has to be closed because there will be nothing down over the concrete. You can't have it open. By that time, we have enough, we put a new connector that goes from uh, Mission to Huntington, it, which is the new roadway, the new intersection. So the traffic will be using that new intersection or part of the intersection to bypass the roadway under the bridge. Typically in the city, we're not allowed, we've been working with city attorney on this. There's no provisions to have incentive for the contractor to finish the project earlier. But the contractor will benefit of, uh, significantly if they complete the project earlier because that, that's where they make the profit. So the con when we say three years, it doesn't mean the contractor cannot complete in two, e two and a half years or two years. So the contractor do have the uh, personal gain if they complete the project earlier. So the first part of the question is I have the OTT answer the second part. Um, as far as nighttime, I do expect that when we have full closure, we have to remove the uh, steel portion of the bridge. That's what we have to do. Um, we have to do a full closure. And most likely we have to do it at night or over the weekend. So I do expect no more than, probably no more than two uh, weekends of closure uh, to remove the steel portion of the bridge. Um, Yes, two weekends of nine ones. Okay. Um, I don't expect to have um, more than that. I, I don't think the contract I need more than two nights. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm speaking from my experience. Of course, we have to wait until the contractors submit their construction schedule that we know exactly how long it will take them. Again, it depending on the uh, equipment, what kind of equipment they have, the staff availability, and so on. But I do expect no more than two weekends of nine ones. Want to answer the second part? Yeah. Regarding the truck, uh, the objective of this project is not to bring the height to standard to allow more trucks. That's not the objective of the project. Uh, Huntington and Soto, they are not major truck routes. And uh, however, they are secondary highways. Trucks will not be prohibited any trucks, because if you do that, then all the local businesses will be suffering. All the trucks that they come here, majority of the trucks that they reach this area is delivering something to the businesses in this area. But the objective of the project, as Don mentioned, is to bring the height clearance to standard, mainly to meet federal standards. And that's why this is one of the factors that this bridge is classified as obsolete is the clearance, the height clearance, and the structural issues and the railings. So you have to bring everything to stand. That doesn't mean we going to advertise now Huntington and Soto that all the trucks that can come over here because now they need the, the vertical clearance. So it's not the objective of the project to uh, detour the trucks to this area. My question is, you're going to open up two lanes northbound and southbound. I mean, you're going to put one lane northbound and southbound on the construction, right? 
You mean yes. during construction? Yeah. Well, during construction, we have at least three stages. Each stage has five or six phases. So it depends which stage we have the plans. But we try to maintain two lanes in each direction. Uh, northbound, two lanes, and the southbound, two. Uh, is going to be from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m.? No. That will be, well, once a permanent setup, those detour plans where you have striping and K rails and crash cushions, you're not going, we're not, the contractor's not going to ship K rails and setups on a daily basis. Once they are set up, they're going to stay there for duration of the stage, whether that's six months, eight months, five months. So, yeah. The well, the work itself, yeah, as Doug mentioned, seven to four. But he, uh, once the contractor goes home, end of the shift, he's not going to open more lanes. You're going to have exactly the same setup because these are not utility type of work where you you take a lane with a cones and end of the shift three three thirty four o'clock they take the, they take the cones out and open it back to traffic. This is a heavy duty construction and whatever the contractor installs is going to stay there for duration of that stage. Because from seven to four is really, the traffic is really busy. I told all the people going to work down, down to Mission and so it's busy traffic. That's why we're trying to maintain that the plan shows two lanes in each direction and the contractor will not be permitted to take one of these lanes during peak hours. He might take one of these lanes with a cone set up off peak, but during peak hours he will not be permitted to take any of the lanes that's open. cannot take any part of the bridge from day one until all part of the intersections being already reconfigured and constructed. And there is a huge great difference by Soto ramp from Mission, where you take the ramp to Soto, there is a great difference. All that grading has to be addressed to build part of the new intersections. And the contractor will not be able to remove any part of the bridge until part of the new intersections are built. Because we need these new intersections to take the traffic to. And uh, I don't believe that the contractor will be able to take half of the bridge and leave the other half. Because normally what we do in, in, in other projects that the contractor works on one side of the bridge while he removing the others or widening the other. This one is is is, uh, is a steel and concrete structure where he cannot shave part of it and keep the other part for traffic. Once he start taking it out, we cannot have any traffic on the bridge, and that's why we have to build enough of the new roadway to have the traffic going there while the contractor taking out the bridge. So it's pretty involved. It's connected to, as you said, that the main issue was the uh, height of the bridge and the railing. Uh, I, I can understand when you said that it's substandard or not to federal uh, requirements. Why not then just rebuild the bridge Why is it necessary to reconfigure the streets so much around it and be more confusing and hard to get 
go back and look at the bridge that was originally built in 1937 for the Pacific electric red cars, um, mainly to separate the uh, traffic from the red cars. Now, the tracks uh, were removed in 1960, so, uh, and the red cars are no longer in commission. So the bridge was mainly for the red cars, and now we don't have the red car anymore. This intersection is one of the uh, dangerous intersections. There are numerous accidents um, reports. I'm sure the Department of Transportation has record of it. Um, that's why um, the objective of the project is to remove it and reconfigure the street to increase the safety as far as traffic and pedestrian. Keep in mind that once we have two signalized intersections in place, the traffic will flow much better. Um, uh, as far as pedestrians, we'll, there will be crosswalk at the intersection. Uh, it will be safer to walk across the street. Um, right now, if you look at the, uh, the intersection, if you want to cross from, uh, from the east side to the west side, it's, it's very dangerous to walk because the traffic going in both directions and you can't even see. It's also because of the curve, there's visibility in that area. So um, a lot of time, for myself today, I'm looking at from Huntington North going to Seoul uh, to Mission. Um, there's visibility problem. That's part of why the reason why we remove the bridge and reconfigure the, the, uh, the streets. No, uh, the bridge will be removed permanently. The street will be gray and uh, create two signal line intersections. Do we have the rendering of that anywhere? It's, yeah, it's on the it's on the um, handout that we have in the back. Yeah, it's on the board also. Um, that's why we remove the bridge.